Hi, and welcome to part three of the class on probability. This is the first module in lecture seven, which is going to be covering an introduction to probability, basic rules of probability, classical probability, um, and so on. And also Bayes' rule. <laughs> um, so the next two modules, next two lectures after this, we're going to cover discrete distributions and continuous distributions. Before doing any of this stuff, though, it's important to understand why we're doing this. In some senses, in some sense, probability is the most important topic you're going to cover in this course. Probability covers and suffuses every aspect of social science, the social sciences. Um, it's central to statistics and it's central to game theory. And if you don't have a good understanding of probability, you're going to find yourself having real trouble understanding later methods classes of all types. But not only that, you're going to also have trouble understanding the literature in all fields. And the reason is we're not learning probability just to be able to compute um, probabilities, right? That would be important and we'll spend some time on that. But we're also learning probability to understand the nature of probability because it is so important to understanding the world around us. Okay. We're going to talk about two major applications as we've done throughout this course statistics and game theory, because those are the two primary ways we see it, even though probability itself is just um, a much broader, much wider um, scope subject. Let's start with, with, with statistics, though. Fundamentally, we don't believe that we can determine behavior exactly. All of our model, all of our empirical models assume at, at their heart that we can determine how one thing might affect another thing probabilistically with some error, but not perfectly. We saw this a little bit at the very end of the last lecture when we were using, when we were looking at OLS and trying to understand how to minimize error. That error is a distribution. That error relates to probability and it relates to the fact that we can't be sure of our actions, that we can't be sure how any particular independent variable affects any particular dependent variable we can't tell with certainty. All we can do is say that we believe one independent variable affects the other one and produce some level of confidence for our belief. To understand the level of confidence, you must understand probability because what you get effectively is a probability distribution over the possible values of these coefficients. And these distributions are central to understanding what these coefficients are. They're not, they do have point predictions, but it's not the point predictions that are solely important, it's the entire distribution. That's going to be central to understanding how to do any statistics, whether you use frequentist or Bayesian statistics, because it's central to understanding the concept of significance, um, and also the, central, the concept of posterior distribution, both of which are central to each, each of frequentist and Bayesian statistics. All of this you learn much more in your stats classes, and this is not intended to be a statistics class, um, but it, it's just to give you a sense of why we're doing this. So probability and statistics is just so central, I can't even pick out pieces of it to show you it's used here, here, and here. It's used everywhere. If you go into a stats department course list, you will see probability just lining every single class. Um, so it's important to understand this. In game theory, it's used more discreetly, although again, it's everywhere. There are really four major areas it's used, probability it comes up in. The first is the most basic one in lotteries. A lottery in game theory, as we've said before, is just any series of random events that are, tie that are tied to outcomes. So for instance, a real lottery, where you go buy a lottery ticket, and then you have some chance of winning nothing, and a much, much smaller chance of winning something. That's a lottery because the chance of getting individual outcomes is random in a sense. It's stochastic. It's probabilistic. These all mean the same thing. Um, other uses, now in order to understand how to behave when you have some kind of lottery, you must take into account the probability distribution of possible outcomes. So probability comes up centrally there. A second use is when your opponent might be behaving randomly. You might wonder why behave randomly. Well, there's a thing in game theory called mixed strategies, and a mixed strategy is one in which you assign some probability to playing each of a series of actions. Why? Let's say you have a penalty kick, right, in soccer or football, depending on what you call it, um, and you're trying to get the ball past the goalie. 
you know, it's going to be hockey or whatever as well. And you shoot the ball or the puck, and you have to try to guess where the goalie won't be. Now, if you always do the same thing, the goalie can easily guess to block that same area of the net, and you never score. If you have a pattern to your behavior, but you always keep the same pattern, again, the goalie can guess. If you randomize your behavior, the goalie can't guess as easily, and then you're more likely to score. So the actual optimal behavior in this case involves behaving randomly. Now, a random behavior is just a probability distribution over actions. So instead of outcomes, it's over actions. And to understand how to deal with that, you must understand probability. So second use. A third use involves what, we, what they call types in game theory. A type in game theory, what we call types in game theory, a like type in game theory is a statement of what kind of player you are. It's a statement of what your preferences are, what your utilities are. Oftentimes in game theory, we have what's called incomplete information in which we're not sure about what the other player wants. Turns out we can represent that as imperfect information in not knowing what type you are, as long as we have some subjective beliefs about what types you may be, some distri probability distribution over your types. So I can say there's some half chance that you're a nice type and will play well with me, and I can cooperate with you to my benefit. And there's a half chance that you're a mean type, and if I try to cooperate with you, you will take advantage of me. And when I try to decide how to play, I must take into account not only what types of player I might be playing with, but what the chances are I'm playing with each type. Right? Since I don't know what type you are. Again, assigning chances to each type is assigning a probability distribution to the different types you may be. So again, you must understand probabilities. And a lot of papers out there that are, that are, that are interesting in um, political science, economics, and so on are based on incomplete information. The fourth, um, the fourth example you're going to see a lot in, in game theory is in terms of information updating. And there, if you get new information based on, you know, about, say, who you're playing with, their type, or new information about the state of the world, then you have to update your beliefs about the state of the world. To do that, you have to incorporate new information optimally. To do that, you need to use Bayes' rule, which again follows from basic probability. So the use of Bayes' rule um, is also central to game theory. It comes up in standard game theoretic equilibrium constants, concepts like perfect Bayesian equilibrium. And that is also part of probability, which you'll need to understand to do game theory. So as I hope you can handle on, um, got a sense of so far, probability is actually everywhere in the social sciences, partially because we do not think our theories are deterministic, they're stochastic, they have an element of randomness to them, we can't be sure of things, and therefore we must produce um, levels of certainty to our actions, we must specify levels of certainty to our um, statements, and this uses probability at a very central um, level, so it's really important to understand, and that's going to be the topic of the next three lectures. Again, in this lecture, we're going to cover the basics, classical probability, some rules, some notation, just sort of the, the core concepts. In the next two lectures, we'll deal with discrete and continuous distributions um, respectively. Thank you very much.